Hi guys, it's Cami, Blushing Foreigner. Hope all of you are happy and well and enjoying the fall season. Autumn, if you are in Britain, we say fall in the US. Yeah, things are good here in Copenhagen. Weather's been a little chilly, a little crisp. We had a major storm earlier this week. So yeah, it's all nice and I'm doing well and busy as ever, but things are good. Today I thought I would do for you a things I'm loving right now. It's mostly makeup, but a few random other elements to talk about. One of them is a book and the other item is a TV show, uh, which a lot of you have probably already seen, but I just watched it last week and really enjoyed it. Okay, the first makeup item is the Beauty Blender. And I really love this. Vanessa, you all know her, the bombshell sweet, Instagrammed a photo of this a month ago and she wrote underneath Game Changer and I completely agree. I purchased this in July when I was home in California and I love it. It really gives you a beautiful application of foundation. I think if you're under 30 and your skin is pretty flawless, if your pores are small, you probably don't need this. But if you do feel like your pores are getting bigger, if you feel like foundation isn't applying as evenly as it used to when you were younger, give this product a go because it just kind of presses it into the skin in a much more seamless fashion than what your fingers are capable of, which has always been my preferred method of applying foundation. Either fingers, most of the time, occasionally I use my Real Techniques brush. But this thing does a better job. I don't know how or why, it just sort of makes the foundation disappear and just kind of sink in to the pores in a better way than your fingers are capable of. So you get it wet, you squeeze out the excess water. I kind of put a paper towel around it and absorb extra water, but it's still extremely moist. And I think that sort of dilutes some of the foundation a slight bit so that you get a more natural finish in a way. So I really, really love this product. I also have the cleanser, but I haven't used this that much, but I, I just forget that I have it. I purchased this like two years ago from, oh gosh, what's that British site? And they showed a picture of this with the blender and I bought it thinking that it came together, but it was just the cleanser. So I've had this for two years without any beauty blender. So I'm excited to finally use it. Okay, I got these NYX illuminators. When I was home in California, I purchased them at Ulta and I have the color Sunbeam and Gleam. And these are really nice. They are a pretty good price. It's really nice as a highlighter. I kind of start here and then I dot it up the cheekbone and then just kind of spread it in. You don't have a ton of time to spread. It does dry within 30 to 40 seconds or so, but it's enough time to sort of work it in. And the Sunbeam shade is more of a white pink pearlescent and this is more of the golden color. This is Sunbeam. It's the whiter pearlescent pinkier shade. And then this right next to it is the color Gleam. I think Gleam is similar to this NARS one. This is my orgasm illuminator. I think they are kind of close in formula and in color. Here they are diffused. I just think these are really simple, nice quality products. I'm quite happy with these two and they're easy to use. I use my Real Techniques brush sometimes, which is like a foundation brush, I suppose. Yeah, it's a pointed foundation brush, which I've never used for foundation. I've actually used mostly for these highlighters. I think they're pretty good products. I have really been enjoying my Shiseido Cream Liner. I have it in the shade number two. It's a brown color. This was a gift from a very nice person, and I love it. It's a really nice formula. It's not as crumbly as some of the other gel liners. It's sort of a flat surface. It's definitely got the gel formula in it. It's not liquidy at all, but it's just easy to use. I can sort of load up the brush without making a mess in the, in the actual bottle. So, and I think the color is really nice. It stays on all day and it's just sort of a fuss-free gel liner. I'm pretty happy with it. I got the Sleek Face Contour Kit, which is pretty fun. It's the contour shade here and then there's a nice highlighter looks like that let me get rid of it and my husband was going to 
London for a really quick business trip and I made up a little wish list of things I needed at needed things I wanted at Boots and Superdrug and he was a total champ and got me everything on my list from both places which was so sweet of him and I think this is one of my favorite products from that little shopping trip by him. I don't use the contour that much but I think for an for a budget contour, it's a very good product. I think when I use it, I have to be careful because my face is already kind of narrow and thin. If I over contour, I can look even more gaunt than normal. So I have to use it sparingly when I feel like my skin is looking plump and fresh, uh, maybe bloated even, <laughs> I can contour and get away with it. But I also do contour around my nose to slim it a bit because I have a bump and this does a beautiful job of that. Next products are my brushes. And these are my Real Techniques brushes that I'm just so happy with. I can't say which one's my favorite, but I think in general, Samantha Chapman's whole range of brushes here, the Real Techniques brushes are so good. It's great value for money. You're getting a brush that does what it says, that is multi-purpose. You can find other ways of using each of the brushes. I feel like she spent a great deal of effort in time perfecting the performance of each brush and sort of not allowing any duds into the line. I think, I think they're good. I think if you spend some money on them, you're not going to be disappointed. I think she really did a great job curating this line and overseeing the quality. This accent brush is really good with the NYX highlighter and sunbeam and I'm using it here on the Cupid's bow and it's just a tiny little brush. You can do some detailed work here on the bow and just kind of go on the side gently on both sides and then kind of blend it out and it sort of makes that area pop. And these two work really well together. I have a perfume to share. I got this as a Sephora gift. It's C by Chloe. Love the smell of this. It's such a, a cute little bottle. This was a perk. I think it was a 500 point perk from Sephora for the VIBs, which I am. I spend too much money there. You guys, I live right above Barresto, so I'm there quite a bit. Barresto is like Starbucks, and it's pretty good. Okay, next item is sort of a confession. I have the Chanel Hydra Beauty Essence Mist. It's an aerosol energizing, hydrating mist. Mist. <laughs> Similar to MAC Fix Plus, only it's aerosol form, I love this product. I've been using it for two years, but this is the first time I've actually purchased it. So, little confession, I use it at airports. <laughs> I fly a lot for work. I do a lot of international travel. We do short trips around Europe. We go up to Stockholm a lot, or Amsterdam, London sometimes, Paris. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but we do unglamorous work trips where it's like quick in and out but we're in airports a lot and I also fly a lot from the US to Denmark because I go home quite a bit and it was at the Chicago airport which is not a fantastic international terminal it's not great there but they have a beauty department and they sold this and it had a different name it's gone through a name change but it's basically their only hydrating mist in the line i can't remember what it was called before i apologize before flights i would spritz my face and notice that on the flight my skin up in the air where my skin tends to dry out massively my skin would do a whole lot better during these flights so you really use a generous amount i would go in there and i'd first thing I would look for at a, at a duty free shop was the Chanel section and then I would grab it and spray my face from the tester of course and then look around and make sure none of the people were looking at me and then do another spray a quick boom boom and then my skin would look really glowy and nice I mean definitely glowy and sort of like a thin film of hydration a, a kind of a glycerin stickiness but not too tacky or annoying but just my skin looked glowy and on the flight my skin would stay that way it would stay hydrated so I really think this is a phenomenal product I told myself that given its high price I probably would never buy it and then I started reflecting on the fact that I was often using it at airports and just borrowing it and I felt like a crook in a way like I was just you know, I'd abused the whole tester idea, and so I bought it, of course, at the Stockholm airport a few weeks ago, or a month ago. 
and I love it. I carry this in my purse. It's great for on the go. I'm using it about once a day. I'm limiting myself. So in the afternoon at work, around two or three, my skin's feeling pretty dry because I have super, super dry skin. I think this is best for dry skin. If you don't have dry skin, you don't need this. So be happy with that. I have been using my NYX Mega Shine lip glosses quite a bit uh, this fall and I love them. I'm wearing one of these today. I think this is Smoky Look. And even though I'm using a cooler, pinker lipstick, I think it works okay over over the shade. This is the color Secret Admirer by Topshop. So I'm using this. I'm using my number seven lip pencil. Kind of getting back into lip pencils. I don't often fuss with them in the morning, but these days I'm doing a lot more of just filling in my lips and using a lip liner all over and then putting a NYX Mega Shine on top. And I think the effect is pretty good. So this is it for my beauty favorites right now. What else? Okay, final thing, last two things, a book, and then I have a TV show to mention that I've been watching that I love. This is Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean In. I think a lot of you have heard all about it. Maybe you've read some reviews. I believe there's been some tough criticism leveled at Cheryl. Maybe some of it warranted, some of it I think is not warranted. I think it sort of reinforces a lot of her messages in the book the way we tend to be very hard on women, including women themselves. Uh, but this was an eye-opening book. I'm not quite done with it. But I'm about three quarters of the way through this book, but it is very enlightening. I find a lot of the studies in here are pretty profound, really just, again, eye-opening. You're like, wow, I didn't realize this was going on. But basically, she's trying to understand all of the forces that combine, come together, to arrive at a situation where women have fewer positions of power in the workforce than men. And there's many reasons for this. It's not one single thing. And she's sort of looking at a lot of the studies and having other experts weigh in. So this book has been pretty well researched, I can say, or it appears to be a very well researched book. But I think it's terrific. I think it's a, a really strong book, not for everybody, you know, any product on the market has a target group. It has people who the product is aimed for, and the same goes for a book such as this. This is not meant for every woman in the world or every, you know, every person. It is aimed at women and men who aspire to positions of leadership. So a lot of people with graduate degrees or people with MBAs who want to one day be, be a CEO or CFO, not necessarily just in the business milieus, but in all the industries, you know, women who have that desire to, you know, be leaders in their industry. It's definitely possible in this world, but there's also a lot of challenges along the way. And that's what she's looking at in this book. What are the, the forces that hold women back? How do we hold ourselves back? All of these things are worth looking at. And I don't think she's, you know, uh, a firebrand feminist in any way. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being a feminist. I am a feminist, of course. I saw a bumper sticker that said, feminism is the radical notion that women are people. You know, we all can agree women are people. And I think feminism and women's studies is a wonderful thing, a, a discipline that is worth looking at and studying as well. So, Anyways, I hope I'm not going to sound horrible for recommending this book because a lot of people have been against it, but I love it. And I think if you read it, I think you'll find it very valuable. So that's my take on it. I'm being very careful about how I talk about it. I don't know why. I shouldn't be so silly. Okay, the last thing is Orange is the New Black, the TV show. I just tore through the whole first season and it was so good. I really enjoyed it. I think it's a little provocative, of course. It's not a delicate subject. I think it might have a, you know, in my assessment, a rated R rating. So I don't know if it's for children or family entertainment, but I think it's such a good TV series. I'm a fan of Genji Cohen, the showrunner, and she also created the TV show Weeds, which was funny. I really enjoyed that show. I thought it was pretty emotional. I thought it was funny at times and very sentimental and sad and, and tragic. 
and I just enjoy it every episode so much. I think it's a show aimed more toward women. Of course, it's about a female prison. I think it's so terrific. I'm really, I was impressed by it. It was funny and I thought the performances were outstanding. I thought the main character who plays Piper Chapman, I think she's fantastic. So all in all, I really liked that show. I recommend it if you haven't seen it yet, if you think it's sort of content you might like. It is, you know, a tough subject, but I also have to give them props for being original. I think we haven't seen a lot of shows about women in prison. I don't think we've seen any shows like this. And anytime something new and original comes along, I want to check it out. So I thought that one was pretty good. So anyways, okay, you guys, I hope all of you are, again, doing well. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about anything, you can write me below about anything, you know, professional or TV related. I actually went to TV film school. Did I tell you guys that before? I studied uh, television screenwriting. That was my degree. So that's part of why I want to talk about TV every now and then, because I just think that it's a real golden era we're in for American TV. The BBC has some great TV as well, but right now in the US, if you want to find the best stories, they're not necessarily at the box office, they're on TV. I think the talent in Hollywood right now is outstanding. I think some of the showrunners, the people writing these series are doing some pretty cool things. So that's just my take on it. Anyways, um, again, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.